Um, good to see you all and uh, welcome to the Salvation Army this evening. Although for the first time I'm not actually in the Salvation Army, um, I'm at home. So good to see you all and um, the numerous conversations I've had um, throughout lockdown is a sense of a real missing of um, being together at the army. And we've all enjoyed going um, around the country, around the world, perhaps listening to various different um, different services and perhaps even different uh, denominations, just been able to have a real variety. But this evening, um, and you had a little introduction that Stephen was warming up, um, that we're going to have a good old Salvation Army meeting with a songs that will hopefully set your feet to tapping. And um, feel free to sing your heart out. Um, you're on mute, so we won't hear, so it's okay, go for it. And um, so, um, and then share a number of different things. And Trude is going to share with a reading uh, a little later, and then I'll um, share a thought. So um, we'll start with the song that Stephen trialed us with. If you've got a songbook and want to follow, it's 949, 949 in the songbook. Um, come join our army. To battle we go and I thought they've all come from the the warfare section of the Salvation Army songbook and um, although we're not at war it feels like a bit like we are at war against a virus and uh, just these uh, these words hopefully will encourage us uh, and remind us that uh, we are actually in in the war um, uh, of fighting for, for souls and, uh, and being the Salvation Army um, and uh, thinking about what, what the Salvation Army was formed um, to do. So let's enjoy a good scene. singing well it was in this house anyway um the um the last verse of that you will have caught 
the um, the words there. Fierce is the back that battle but victory will come well never did we think on the 15th of march when we met in the hall together and realized we might not be able to meet for a little while but here we are um what's that eight months later still not um, able to meet together in a group but um it promises us there victory will come we will get there we'll be able to be together um, and I thought as we come to prayer this morning, you'll have caught on many different um, platforms in the Salvationist, with the, um, if you've been able to listen to the Territorial Commander's message, um, various different videos, hopefully that you've been able to see in one form or another, or stories told, um, that the Salvation Army is not closed. It hasn't been closed at all throughout uh, lockdown. Um, the Salvation Army is still out there and active and um, doing what God has given it the opportunity to do. And I thought it would be good for us. Um, and this is a, a little video as we come to prayer um, of what the Salvation Army is involved in. Now you'll notice because there's no social distancing on the video that this was videoed before lockdown. But as I watched it and as I went through it, most of what is on there has carried on. The one thing of gathering together in a group for worship is, is what we've missed most and what we've lost. But so much of what the Salvation Army is involved in and how it reaches out with heart to God and hand to man um, has still carried on. And so as we watch this video, as we come to prayer, I want you to be praying for the many situations where people are, are working hard and in our own core just the, the vast amount of food parcels that are given out each week, um, the able to um, have contact with families who've been bereaved, um, the ability that we've had to actually visit people at their homes, on their doorsteps, and to try and encourage people. And perhaps it's been a time when we've consciously thought more about others. Um, so um, as we watch this video, I want you to be praying for the, the larger Salvation Army, but also for our core as, uh, as we look at what God, the opportunities God's given to us. Then I'll share a prayer together. pray. Heavenly Father, this evening we just want to thank you for that very quick um, whistle-stop tour of the many opportunities that we in the Salvation Army have. We may not be able to do all of those things here at Llanetli, but as we look at them, as I think about how we reach out to the homeless in different ways, how we encourage families, how we've kept in touch with children and the youth, how we reach out to elderly people who've not been able to get out hardly at all. Father, we thank you for the reminder that although we miss coming together in corporate worship of sitting together in your house, I thank you for the many opportunities that have been ours. And even for those of us that perhaps have spent most of the eight months indoors, Father, I thank you that you have inspired them 
to pick up the telephone, to speak to one another, to reach out to people. And the stories will be endless of the, the small things that have made a big difference in these months. And Father, we want to ask you that just now, as we, we sit in this time of waiting, but with hope on the horizon, um, that you inspire us, that you give us a vision for what, um, for what the Salvation Army here in Tlenetli will look like when we reopen those doors. Father, help us to learn lessons from these time. Help us to listen to your voice in these next weeks as we prepare that we won't go back to all that we were doing, but that we can return to ministry in your name. So Father, help us, inspire us, give us courage, um, and uh, just give us a vision for what you would have us be and do. And Father, just as we meet together, a relatively small number, we do want to just stop and pause and think of the many people from our church, from our core, who for whatever reason aren't able to join with us here, and maybe lack of technology, maybe busy with families, for whatever reasoning, we just want to ask you um, to be with them, to bless them, to encourage us um, to be your church. Father, I thank you for the many, many individuals in this town who have, over the course of these months, just carried on um, and, and done what you, you have given us to do as safely as we possibly can. We pray your continued protection over us. And uh, we just ask that you would um, give us a hope, give us an enthusiasm, despite these uh, shorter hours, uh, shorter days of, of a light, um, perhaps when it's easy to get a bit gloomy. Um, Father, just uh, inspire us, we pray. So we just ask now that you be with us each. In your name, we pray. Amen. The, um, uh, some of you will have been watching other core and they've managed to, uh, uh, where they've got different groups, uh, record them singing. And uh, so I thought it'd be nice for you to hear um, uh, one of the singing companies. I visit Norwich most Sunday mornings. Um, some of you might go there. Some of you might go um, other places in the country. It would be interesting, I guess, to actually have um, a map and actually mark how many different places we visit in one Sunday. Um, so we're going to listen to the Norwich Singing Company and uh, listen carefully to the words and hopefully you know, it'll help you tap your feet, but also kind of make you smile. Um, and some of the words say, don't be grumpy, don't go on and on. Not that that applies to any of us, of course. Um, so just enjoy this as we listen to them. perhaps remember the words count your blessings name them one by one um, but uh, uh, cheer us on our way but the reality is well I can only speak for myself we do get a little bit grumpy don't we um, that's a rhetorical question I don't need anyone to nod 
as I'm saying that. We'll sing again together um, another song from the songbook, 960. 960, a good Salvation Army song. Um, in the army of Jesus, we've taken our stand to fight against the forces of sin. To the rescue we go, Satan's power to overthrow and his captives to Jesus will win. I'll stand for Christ, for Christ alone. You can remain seated as you sing, I'll stand for Christ. Kuda is going to share our scripture reading with us just now from 1 Timothy. You make sure you unmute, Truda. Okay. From Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy, and chapter 6, and reading from verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this commandment without spot or blame 
until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in inapproachable light, with whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honour and might for ever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present word, world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Truda. Um, another one of the things that I think most of us will have missed, um, and certainly I've missed playing in the band, um, we miss listening to the band. We've listened, obviously, on the recordings, um, but there's nothing like um, a, a band playing live. And I haven't got a live band here to play for you um, th this afternoon. Uh, but I thought it'd be nice for us to listen and to watch um, the Melbourne Staff Band. And they are um, going to play uh, an ar um, arrangement of the, 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 um, the words, This is my story. This is my song, praising my saviour all the day long. So I hope you enjoy this. Sit back, relax, put your feet up, have a sip of tea and enjoy. Thank you. 
This is my story. This is my song. I wonder what your story is just now and how much of our story is his story. How much of our story will be history, literally? Um, and what will the history of these last months tell for each of us? Some of you might remember three weeks ago as we went into a fire break lockdown um, that I, I challenged you to start a project, finish a project, um, do something different, achieve something different in those weeks. Now, it's not a test because um, I started one, but in my usual fashion, it's not finished. So um, I'm not going to make us all feel bad by going, oops, forgot, or I started it, didn't finish it. But the, the challenge for us to make the most of those two weeks. Um, and uh, I, I wonder if in these days um, of, um, of COVID, of living, um, although we've been released, sorry, mum and dad, you're not released, you're back in lockdown in those foreign climes of England. Um, but um, in, in Wales, we're now uh, under different rules again. In fact, they've changed so often, I've no idea what they are, I just avoid people seems to be working okay um, and um, it's it's we, we don't really know where we stand but I wonder have you found almost an acceptance almost um, I want to say contentment but I'm guessing that that's probably taking it a bit too far that actually I think it's probably an acceptance of we are where we are and we make the best of the situation we find ourselves. Um, in those verses that um, Truda read, there's some verses there that said, godliness with contentment is great gain. And um, I guess it's always hindsight that you realize the benefit of things. And I think in uh, the years to come, the months to come, when we are finally released, and um, we get back to some resemblance of the normal that we knew nearly a year ago. Um, I wonder if we'll be able to look back and reflect and realize the gain that we have made. Um, the, this afternoon, I just wanted us, there, there's verses, various verses in that scripture that I, I just took as uh, Paul was writing his letter to Timothy, that sense of um, um, positivity, that the sense of kind of, uh, and I'm, I'm sure whenever Paul was writing, he was never in the best of situations. He was up against it most of the time. But when he spoke those positive words, um, where he, he implores um, Timothy to flee from all that love of money and pursue righteousness, godliness, Faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Well, I think those are what uh, perhaps many of those are um, things that we've had to face. And um, and we've certainly learnt endurance. Um, I don't know whether we've been stuck in, we've learnt gentleness as well, maybe with ourselves as well as each other. And then it goes on to say, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Uh, I think the months gone past will, for each of us, have been a roller coaster ride. There'll be some days where you've been able to go, I'm very blessed, I count my blessings and uh, life, is, life is good. There's many people worse off than me. And yet there'll be other days when it just almost feels like the end of the world and why do we bother or can't be bothered. And, uh, and, I, and I think that's the roller coaster that most people will have been on. And I guess um, I've come to the kind of conclusion um, for myself, um, and I try to, try to remi remind myself of this because there's so much that we can't do and trying to make the decisions for the right thing to do. Um, the words from Theodore Roosevelt came to mind. I had to look it up. I didn't know who'd said them, but I knew the words. Um, but uh, from, from that uh, learned man, it si simply says, do what you can with what you have where you are. 
And as we think about fighting the good fight, it's very easy, isn't it, to concentrate on the things that we're not able to do as individuals or as a core, as a collective group of people. But actually, when we reflect on the many things that have taken place over these last months, we can claim and hang on to those words, do what you can with what you have where you are. Another learned individual, and I think it might have been somebody like Charlie Brown or somebody equally as um, famous as him, that says, if life gives you lemon, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And just, uh, it feels like some days that we've got um, a mouthful of lemons given to us, haven't we? And we can't do anything that we'd want to do. And as we are making plans, and as we're thinking about Christmas, um, Advent starts in just two weeks time and we start our Advent series. Um, it's a strange feeling, isn't it? And, um, and I have to say, as much as there's so many things I will miss of this Christmas season, and I'm sorry that we won't be able to gather to celebrate all together. I think there's an opportunity for it to be a very significant Christmas for us as well. And maybe without some of the rushing around and the trying to achieve everything, that maybe we can um, rest a little more in, the, in this Advent season, that we can journey together as best we can, um, but that as we, as we prepare for that time, to make the very most of the situation we find ourselves in. Verse 17 of that reading from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Command those who are rich in this world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. And I guess as uh, we face a very different few weeks as the lead up to Christmas, that we, um, we try and we endeavour to do that, um, to put our hope in God and to, um, to do good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. And already um, I, I have a sense that this Christmas will be different and it will be very disappointing in so many ways. But may we continue to look for the opportunities, just as we saw that video at the beginning, as we shared some prayer together, of all the possibilities of the very seemingly simple things that we can do for others and for ourselves that will make such a huge difference. As we look to the new year, I'm allowed to do that, we're in November. It's not that many weeks away. But as we look to 2021, um, I have to confess my diary is still pretty empty. It's, you, you don't like to put anything in there, really. I filled it up this time last year for 2020 and just spent my entire months crossing things out, um, tipex in them out, rubbing them out. Um, in 2021, there's a new day. A new day is dawning. There's going to be a whole new thing for us. And um, I wonder if we'll be ready. All these months of waiting, um, will we be ready? Have we been changed? I don't think we can come out of this not changed as people. And um, as for us as a core, for the Salvation Army, um, there have had to be changes that uh, because of the circumstances, right from the, 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 the bigger picture around the world in our territory, to the core here at Clinetley. We will have paid a price in so many ways, and yet we have every opportunity ahead of us. And so I guess I sow the seed for you as I have done for myself in these last few days. What is the Salvation Army really all about? What is it about? And um, we know the Salvation Army as we've always known it, as I'm looking around, I don't think any of us were around when William Booth was starting the Salvation Army and what he really set out to do with his heart to God and hand to man. And as uh, General John Gowans so succinctly put it, that we are here to save souls, to grow saints and to serve suffering humanity. And I challenge myself and Natalie Corps at this time 
How are we gonna do that in 2021? The excitement of a new day, a new diary, a new page, a new book, a clean sheet. We've stopped everything we've ever done in a practical way, and yet we have a whole opportunity. What is it that God's saying to us that we can fight the good fight, fight. we can put into place righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness? So I leave that thought with you for now. Sleep on it. Let it fester in your mind or germinate or whatever. If God gives you inspiration in the middle of the night, write it down. Don't phone me in the middle of the night, but you can phone me the next morning or text me. Um, but may we be listening to what God is saying to us for all that he holds ahead of us. So we're going to sing another song together. 954 in the songbook, if you have your songbook. Just the two verses, words that inspire me and, um, and hopefully will give us a vision for what we can be um, as, we, as we think about these days ahead. God's soldier marches as to war, a soldier on an alien shore, a soldier true, a soldier who will keep the highest aims in view. And the chorus we're going to fill, fill, fill the world with glory. We're going to smile, smile, smile and not frown. I best type that out and stick it on my computer for these coming days and um, to make sure that I don't do too much frowning. So um, I'm inviting you to sing this as we come to our, our close this afternoon. <laughs> said that I would never have a meeting with pets in but it is lovely to see Theo and uh, another cat joining us it's amazing who will come to the army um, good to see you all and uh, a benediction to share and it's a lovely benediction and it's you have opportunity to sing it but it's from Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 you will have heard it before the benediction may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's my prayer for us each today, that we will indeed be filled with joy and peace and hope. So for our benediction together, and let's share in this verse sung together. May the God of hope fill you Trust in Him, as you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, as you trust in Him, as you trust in Him. So that you might overflow with hope, 
Hannah Gay. Thank you for coming this evening. Safe journey home.